My name is Rachel and I am a travel and conservation YouTuber currently in India. And in this three-part series, I join a group of incredible wildlifers and conservationists to find the migratory routes of the missing tigers of Rantambo. Okay, well, we've just interviewed this man who was attacked by a sloth bear uh, a couple of months ago. And the sloth bear was out in the field with him and took away his axe. Here we have the goat pen and the leopard has actually been able to get one of them out of here. In the next episode, we go into the famous Rantambo National Park to take our chances at spotting tigers in their natural forested habitat. Oh, the day is finally here, the day that we are going into a Rantambo Tiger Reserve. As you can see behind me, we are in Rantambo, so everything is tiger crazy over here. And not for bad reason, because Rantambo has about 80 tigers or so, so it has a very high population, dense population of tigers. And today we're going into the reserve. And I can't wait for it because, oh man, just the idea of maybe seeing a tiger is making me very excited. Morning. <laughs> you excited? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we've made it into our big vehicle. Now I believe that we have like about 20 seats in this thing, so. I think a lot of people will be joining us on the safari as well. Yes, it's so cold this morning, so I'm really glad that we've got some layers, jackets, scarves, hats. Uh, the temperature difference here changes a lot during day and night. So be prepared that if you're gonna go on the early morning safari that you do bring some layers to cover up. And then also, yeah, that you can take them off, you know, when uh, it starts getting a little bit warmer. Rontambo usually opens up at 7. We're going to have a bit of a late start this morning because it's now 5 past 7. Because when you're in one of these big vehicles, obviously you're going to be waiting around for people as well. So that's okay. Just stay hopeful. We're going to go in. Hopefully we're not the last vehicle in. And we can still have a good uh, time in Rontambo. So we've arrived at the entrance of Rantabo about 20 minutes late and um, unfortunately this means that, that it will cut out of our time because you have to be out on the morning at half past nine. So we've gotten here a bit late which means we'll have about two hours in Rantabo itself which Dr. Joy says is still a good amount of time. Yeah, we still have two hours. We still have safari. two hours for the safari yeah. so, so hopefully we can see something inside. Yeah. <laughs> Finally into it. So the exciting thing about doing the morning safari is that you obviously arrive a little bit in the dark and then the light comes up and the temperature is now also starting to rise. So apparently zone one is absolutely incredible for sightings and that's where we're going through now. Just generally the, the whole area is just beautiful we've got a little water bodies we've got the big mountains everything like that there is another option and that is that you can do an afternoon safari here in uh, Rantambor but I'm actually really happy that we did the morning there's some sort of weird exciting feeling you know waking up getting ready in the dark and then heading out into the bush to go and try and find uh, some incredible animals so uh, yeah it's a really good start to the day Thing you're going to want to look out for when you are in the vehicle is that you keep your face in, your arms in, and that you aren't standing on anything because there's a lot of like branches and stuff that will come through that can hit you and just put it in the face. Um, but also, it's just really important that you stay safe in the vehicle so that you're sitting down and um, you know you can't get hit by anything, but you can also not fly out. the first animals yeah. <laughs> some spotted deer they're always cute man i like spotted deers <laughs> so we just bumped into the forest department on their little scooter patrolling the area now to be honest i'm not quite sure how much i would like to be sitting on a scooter in an area that is known for tigers leopards and sloth bears but uh, tough boys <laughs> Oh, I 
So, so far we haven't seen any tigers yet and neither have the other vehicles. So the forest department hasn't seen a tiger yet, the other vehicles are apart, haven't seen a tiger yet. So we're going to stay here, trying to listen to the calls if we can actually hear that above everything else. And um, hopefully based off of the calls we'll be able to know which direction we'll go. <laughs> Okay, so we still have 45 minutes left on the safari. What do you think the chances are that we will see? Zero. Zero? Why? Because there is no movement. We are trying to listen to the call. Yeah. But uh, there is no call of, uh, of any bird or any other antelope. Yeah. And people are making noise like anything inside the forest. And uh, I think animals are also listening to this noise. Yeah. So it is very difficult for us to spot a tiger or any other animal also in the forest. Yeah, yeah. This is a thing. Like I think um, known safari etiquette. You know, if you are a wildlife enthusiast and you go on safaris more often, is that the first thing is you make as little noise as possible and you stay patient. Hi, buddy. Oh my gosh! It is a tech of the little birds. Look at them. They're everywhere. <laughs> So these are called Rufus Rufus Yeah, so we just stopped uh, for a little toilet break. Now, obviously, there's no guarantee when you're going out into the wild because these are wild animals. They are doing their thing. They move when they want to move. But there are obviously going to be some ways of enhancing your chances of seeing them. And the first is really to just be as quiet as possible. I know that the vehicle makes quite a bit of sound, but um, obviously you know by making yourself more present it's gonna lower the chances of any animals wanting to come out anyways because they know that something is happening so um yeah you man i really hope that we still get to see an animal but uh yeah as dr joy said chances are quite slim now you do still have a high chance of seeing uh, tigers here in rantambo because there are about 80 or so tigers and there are other animals as well and you'll have more chance here <laughs> than say somewhere else. So uh, yeah, it's definitely so cool to come and check it out. Um, but I'm still trying to stay hopeful that we'll find one and uh, and be able to see it. Ooh! Oh my gosh, it is a tech of the little birds. Look at them, they're everywhere. <laughs> okay, so apparently there is a tiger call going on, so let's try and see if we can spot a tiger. Okay, so we heard a samba call and there was a pin drop silence and we were hoping that we would still be able to uh, spot uh, anything actually on our way out. But unfortunately we didn't, so I think this is where our safari is going to start heading uh, in then. It's now about uh, quarter to ten. But you know what, it's actually been very nice to at least be in the environment and uh, be out on this beautiful ride. So yeah, I think Rontambo is still, well, maybe I'll come and visit again just to up the chances. But um, it's going to be an exciting experience, man. You're like uh, out there in the wild in uh, the safari vehicle. But uh, yeah, we're going to head out now. back at our hotel and I've got to say even though we didn't see any tigers I still had a good time and I think that we had a very good guide because he was able to hear the calls very well despite some people talking and in the end of it you know as soon as there was a call you know people understood that they had to be quiet and I think the main thing is to also just have a conversation on you know why we're trying to listen for certain things and stuff like that so that people also know you know what they can look out for on their next safari so I still think it was a very enjoyable experience, uh, despite not seeing any tigers, leopards, or sloth bears. Um, and also kudos to our uh, to our guide because uh, he was able to hear the calls and he was very uh, switched on. So that was all good. Now I think we're gonna get ready for yes. breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at that! A delicious dosa. Okay, so yesterday Dr. Joy told us that during the cold and when you're tired and stuff, like you can start hallucinating if you're on one of these safari drives that you see like buildings behind the trees and stuff. So you need to stay warm. But, but we were sort of talking in the car and he told me that like, you know, I saw like this man and then I thought, oh no, I'm just hallucinating. I was like, what? I had that exact same thing. We were both in the vehicle and at the same time, we thought we saw a man, but we didn't even say anything to each other. Yeah, it was like a, a, a man walking between the trees. Uh, yeah, because uh, 
So as I told us already, like uh, it can be possible you will feel the hallucination. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, oh my god, is it, it is real. Yeah, but now the now the real question is, was it really a man, or were we both hallucinating the exact same thing at the exact same time? Yeah. Possibility is small that it was a man. I don't think we'll ever find out. So actually inside of Rantambor you have a fort and that's where we're heading off to next. But we just got the information that in zone 6 there was actually a sighting today. And this is the zone that we were originally going to book. But then we decided to go for zone number 1. Or well, Dr. Joy booked zone number 1. So we didn't see it. Thank you Dr. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> actually quite crazy that this is also the boundary of Rantambor. This wall. To get to the fort, you go straight through the entrance of Rantambor and instead of going to one of the zones, you just keep following the road down to the fort. But look at the drive, man. The drive is already so beautiful. You're going through the natural area. So, you know, there could still be potential that you spot something while you're driving up. And the entrance to the fort is free. So, why not check it out if you're going to go to Rantambor anyways? There's a tiny baby. This one is so young. So we've got a lady being lifted up, <laughs> so she doesn't have to walk. She's also a little bit older. Anyways, they've stolen the water bottle. <laughs> Here we have the lake, and down there you'll even see a crocodile. I'll try and zoom it in, in the video. Isn't that a great view, man, of the lakes? See, it is not very clear because people have stood on it. Stood on it. Yeah, but uh, can be of some cow also. But I can see some berries inside it. So that's sloth bear. Berries is a fruit of sloth bear. Oh. It is fresh. Sloth bear poop? Like thinner, but can be of Just be careful. There are still wild animals here, so do be aware of your surroundings. Uh, another thing to also keep in mind is we're here in the start of February during midday and it's actually so warm. So even though that you have the potential chance of monkeys taking your water bottles, definitely bring some water to hydrate. Maybe some suntan lotion if you have pale white skin such as I do. And bring a cap to protect your head from the sun. Because it is a warm day today, guys. It's like we've been... Hey, bro. Good night. <laughs> it's like we've been sitting up camera traps the whole time. We've been safe for three days. We go to a fort and then we die. You know? <laughs> Rondenbo is definitely beautiful, but it feels slightly strange that we're walking to a fort, you know, on a fort that is surrounded still by so much wildlife. Like for me, I don't think I can fully put that into perspective because I haven't seen a tiger or a leopard jet or anything in this environment. So it just feels so strange and elusive, you know, that you've got these large, large animals roaming around here as we are chilling by this fort. But it was also something quite magical. I mean, this fort is very, very old and you can just imagine that back in the time, you know, you have this view and maybe you see your enemy or something like this. I just try to picture what it would be like uh, back in the day. But uh, for now, we're going to enjoy it with the sunshine. Does anybody fancy a swim? Ah, uh, no. No. <laughs> Okay guys, well I've got to say, the last days with Hope and Beyond and migrating paws has been absolutely incredible. From trying to learn about the tigers and leopards, you know, in the wildlife corridors outside of Rantambor, to actually visiting Rantambor itself, I think it's been a pretty incredible experience. Now unfortunately we didn't see any tigers in Rantambor, but that doesn't take away from the magic of this place, and I'd still highly recommend to go and check it out. 
Now, thank you for following along all the way through this three-part series. And if you didn't see episode one or two, I suggest you go and watch those first before actually watching this episode so you get a bit more context. But thank you for coming all the way to the end of the video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.